We're back as promised with an NBC News investigation about smoke detectors that may surprise a lot of people, including those of us who followed the rules about where to install them, how often to check the batteries. The problem is, as you're about to see, even when the deadliest fires erupt, they may not deliver the warning needed to save lives. Tonight's report from our national investigative correspondent, Jeff Rawson, is an urgent matter that gets off to a very disturbing start. 911. I have a fire in my home. I've got a baby I've got to crawl with. A desperate mother waking up to a house full of smoke, trying to save her kids. My first thought is the four people that I have upstairs. Trying to make sure that they're not scared to death, that they're safe. The kids didn't make it. Cause of death, smoke inhalation. So why didn't they have more warning? After all, Amanda Deputy says, the house had working smoke detectors. And then when it was time, they never went off. Amanda says she had the most common type of smoke detector used in 90% of homes. Inexpensive, easy to find alarms that rely on ionization technology. They work well to detect fires with fast flames. But experts say they may not save you in smoldering, smoky fires that can strike while you sleep. Don Russell is a scientist at Texas A&M. When I go to the store to buy a smoke detector, I assume that it's going to sound when there's smoke. That's a reasonable assumption, but it's wrong. So we had him set up a test. Placing three ionization detectors, the kind most of us have, in a room, then setting a couch on fire. Toxic smoke is building, but it takes 36 minutes for the first detector to go off. But there's another technology out there that gives you better warning in these fires. It's called a photoelectric detector. So Dr. Russell set up another test, this time with a photoelectric next to those three ionization detectors. 17 minutes in, with barely any smoke in the room, the photoelectric sounds the alarm. The ionizations, they're still silent for another 21 minutes, even with smoke everywhere. If I would have relied on ionization, they, my family probably wouldn't make it out. But with the photoelectric, they would have had plenty of time to get out. The leading smoke detector companies do make photoelectric alarms, but still sell most of their products without it. I think it's probably a business decision. The ionization detectors cost less money to make than the photoelectric. That is a correct statement. The companies told us all their detectors provide adequate escape time and meet safety standards. But critics say the government should force higher standards. So we went to the agency overseeing the companies. Why not mandate photoelectric? Because both technologies are working and saving lives. We know of several cases where the smoke alarm, people say, just did not go off. In those cases, that they, they need to practice a fire escape plan to make sure they can get out. But if the smoke detector didn't go off and the house is full of smoke by the time it does, what does an escape plan do? It helps them escape better when the smoke alarm eventually goes off. But eventually isn't good enough for the mom who lost nearly everything. I would like to think that if I had known that I might have a family of seven instead of a family of three, just to be clear, no one is saying throw out your smoke alarm tonight. Fire officials say the best advice is to have both technologies in your home. You can even buy a dual detector that has both in one. Thing is, Brian, they are harder to find in the stores and they'll cost you a little more money too. All right, Jeff Rawson, thank you for your reporting on this.